Is that my audio? I thought I turned off the music. Yeah, I... Okay. Well, hello everybody who's watching. Looks like we got a couple of viewers. So, so, okay, can you put on headphones, Emily? Yeah, sorry, hang on. Well, <laughs> I, hope, I hope that not everybody can hear that the music playing. Well, it's done it's now. So. Real, real quick. Okay, so we are in fact live, so let me uh, run this. Okay, so uh, welcome to Kerbal Space Program 101. Until we find a better name, that's what I'm going to call this. Um, my name is Ben. Uh, my co-host is Emily. And uh, hi, Emily. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. <laughs> I'm excited to learn. Oh, well, yeah, well, well, we'll see how much learning actually gets done here and how much crashing uh, gets done instead. That's fun. Um, so uh, Emily and I were talking. Emily just uh, uh, just bought KSP um, sometime last week, right? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, aside from the initial crashes and burns, she's actually done really well, but uh, she's been texting me a little bit, asking some questions, um, and uh, I figured, you know what, uh, I'd like to be able to point her at, uh, at a really good tutorial on YouTube, but they, there just aren't any good tutorials nowadays. I mean, there were some really great ones uh, a couple of versions ago, but we've, uh, we've moved beyond... Uh, the usable tutorials. So I, I figured we better do it ourselves, right? Okay, so my computer's running really slow. Um, I can broadcast KSP um, at a reasonable frame rate and it's not too bad, but uh, just trying it today, it's been a little sluggish, so I restarted my computer. Please uh, bear with me if, if this is really, really horrible. Um, let's see we got to figure out a way to... Because I'd, I'd like to be able to take questions from the audience if we can, if anybody's got any questions. Um, so why doesn't everybody go to um, uh, the YouTube channel? Uh, it, it, I'm hoping that everybody's watching this from YouTube. That was the only link I gave out. Uh, if you want to go ahead and leave a, a comment on the YouTube um, video, um, we'll uh, we'll circle around at the end and, and try to uh, get some questions from there. Just pull out the page real quick to see if anybody's on there. Okay, so no no comments other than mine. So if you have comments, go ahead and uh, and leave them there. So uh, what I wanted to do for this first one was just uh, get something into orbit. Um, so. Uh, I figured later on we can talk about ship design and mission planning and all that, but I figured let's just do the, the basic thing that everybody wants to do and, and put a, a hunk of uh, metal into orbit. So this is the KSPX. It's one of the uh, ships that comes uh, with the game. Um, obviously there are some uh, non-starter parts, so to access this ship you're going to have to play in sandbox mode until you unlock those parts. Uh, but uh, we can put this into orbit, and we can actually put it a lot of different places, but I, I know for sure it's going to go to orbit. So uh, let's go ahead and do this. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit T to turn on the SAS. The SAS is your friend. It's just a, uh, an autopilot. And then I'm going to throttle up. Oh, my God, look how long it's taking me to throttle up. This is painful. Oh, bang your poor laptop. Yeah, I'm buying a new one soon. Uh, okay, so uh, to get into orbit, uh, a lot of people go straight up. And that'll get you to space, but it won't get you to orbit, right? This took uh, me a long time to figure out. <laughs> yeah, so uh, what do you got to do to get into orbit? I don't know, go high. You got to go high and you got to go up there. <laughs> well, the, the main thing is you got to go fast. Um, yeah, and where, how high... How high is it that the atmosphere actually ends? The like atmosphere goes up to 70, the, the atmosphere goes up to seventy kilometers. Okay. Yeah, and that's that's something that's not super obvious. Uh, if you go into the map mode, you can click I for information. Oh, that's uh, 
ship information. Where's the gosh darn? Okay, so you gotta you gotta double click on the planet first, and then you can click on this uh, this planet here. And it gives you orbital information. This is really handy, uh, including the atmosphere height down here. It says seventy kilometers, oh. and that applies to uh, any body. So. There's Moon, it has no atmosphere. There's Minmus, it has no atmosphere. There's Duna, it does have atmosphere, and it's uh, 50, 000, or 50 uh, kilometers. Uh, so let's go back to our ship. Um, so the first thing I normally do is, uh, after I've throttled up and turn on my SAS, um, I get my, uh, my... Oh, I thought I deorbited this other ship here. <laughs> I put it into orbit just because I was waiting around and I needed something to do. Uh, okay, so the first thing I do is I uh, give myself kind of this kind of a view so I can see uh, what my uh, orbit looks like, and I bring up my uh, nav ball because we're going to need that later. Um, oh, jeez, Louise. <laughs> Those graphics are stunning. <laughs> as soon as we get away from, uh, as soon as we get away from chaos, the the space stunner, it'll be fine. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to leave the staging the way it is. You notice that we're going from uh, stage 8 down to stage 0. In the first stage, we have all of these engines. Uh, this is set up by uh, asparagus staging, so we've got uh, all these engines broken out instead of having them all be in one, uh, you know, one engine with a 6 next to it. Then there's our main engine, and then there are our clamps. So what's going to happen is when I hit spacebar to stage, we're going to light the engines first, and then they're going to run until I hit space again and we release the launch clamps. Uh, I hate doing it this way, but since this is the way it's set up, I'm just going to do it. So uh, here we go, three, two, one. Oh, here's the best part. All right, and off we go. So the way this is set up is uh, we're going to burn through two of these guys first. Let me look upwards. That'll get us going a little faster. There we go. So we're going to burn off two of these guys first. I'm not quite sure which one they are. Okay, it's these guys. Yeah, you can see we're already going through the fuel here. So once we get down to the bottom, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, stage again to separate that f those first two boosters. There they go. And then uh, now we're going to work on uh, this one, right? Oh, no, that's this one. And I'm going to work on this guy. This is going to go all the way down. And you notice they're also down here in the corner, but you get a more exact number if you right-click on them. Oh. Um, and the reason that we're doing this uh, this weird staging, this is something that you don't really see in real life. The only thing that, the only ship that's ever done this uh, is the uh, is SpaceX's um, uh, heavy variation and uh, that is still on the drawing board. So it's called a, Q a fuel cross feed. We do it in KSP all the time. They don't do it in real life hmm. yet. We're getting there. Uh, but what it does is it lets you strip off weight uh, faster. Um, and uh, you you know you could just do regular drop tanks, or you could uh, actually attach a, a rocket to the bottom of them. So what I like to do is I like to go up to five kilometers before I start uh, pitching over. Um, there are a million different opinions about what else. Oh crap! Oh no! Yeah. Okay. Look so there, what there, you did. I staged. That's what I did. Too quickly. Yeah. I I meant to pitch over and I was talking and I wasn't. Paying That's okay. Uh, so. Uh, uh, Everybody will give you a different opinion on, on when the best time to pitch over is, and there is an absolute answer. Um, the only thing is that it's not uh, a very easy answer to come by. It, it differs uh, depending on the ship, depending on the atmosphere, and all that kind of good stuff. Um, I remember watching a video uh, by Scott Manley, who's the absolute best at KSP. And he did uh, a number of different altitudes where he started his turn. And uh, from what I remember, I'm just going to restart this. From what I remember, 5,000 was the magic number. Um, and uh, uh, I think most people disagree with me. I think most people uh, say that you should go up to 10,000. But uh, I've done a little bit of experimenting, and uh, 5,000 seemed to be the best. 
Uh, and uh, that's that's my answer. I'm sticking by it. And uh, I, I would love to be proved wrong, but uh, until the, until somebody does the work, because I'm not going to do it, uh, I'm going to keep doing it at five. Um, so yeah, so what you're doing is you're going straight up, because you're trying to get out of the atmosphere first, right? Because the atmosphere is like soup. Um, and you, you, on an airless body, you can start burning. Yeah, whatever. Uh, on an airless body, you can start burning sideways almost immediately. And actually, uh, on airless bodies, that's the most efficient way to go. But uh, since we've got uh, the atmosphere to deal with, um, we got to go straight up first, um, just to get you know a little bit into the thinner atmosphere, and then we start pitching over. Uh, and we slowly pitch over so that uh, we're slowly gaining horizontal speed, and we uh, come on. There we go. Okay. So you're slowly gaining horizontal speed, and you're you're not fighting gravity too much, or rather, you're fighting gravity, but when you're when gravity is more uh, affecting you. Mm -hmm. Um. What really matters is less about the altitude at which you start your turn and more how steep your turn is. If you've got a vehicle um, with a low thrust weight ratio, you're going to want uh, a steeper uh, ascent profile so that you're pointing uh, closer to um, straight up more of the time. Um, if you've got a vehicle with a very high thrust to weight ratio, then you want to pitch over quicker so that you're um, dumping more energy into accelerating horizontally. Um, and uh, it's real easy to tell what the thrust to weight ratio of your vehicle is uh, because it's the difference uh, between uh, your heading angle and your prograde angle. So uh, on the nav ball, uh, we're pointing it at prograde right now, the, the yellow marker right there. Um, and prograde is directly up because we're pointing directly up. As soon as we start to pitch over, prograde is going to start slipping away from us as gravity uh, begins to pull us down as we're not uh, putting all of our energy into, into accelerating upwards. Okay, so there's 5,000, so let's go ahead and start pitching over. Um, the way that I, I... Actually, I think I told you this, Emily. Uh, the way that I do my uh, ascent profiles is I want it to be as easy to do repeatedly as possible. So I break it up by, uh, by atmospheric pressure. Right. So there are three different regions of atmospheric pressure. Uh, the light blue, the medium blue, and the dark blue. Um, by the time my pressure indicator is reached... Uh, the end of the light blue, I like to be at 45 degrees. Um, and I like my prograde to be 45 degrees, not my actual heading. Because uh, you can see right now my prograde is slowly slipping further uh, away from me. And it'll continue to do that uh, until we're uh, well out of the reach of gravity and I can point directly at it. Mm -hmm. um, if you can point directly at prograde, that's better because it's more efficient to point directly at prograde um, rather than to point off the direction. Because if you're pointing away from it, then you're spending energy changing the direction that you're traveling in. Um, and then uh, by the time, you know, ooh, we need to get moving. Uh, by the time I reach the end of the middle blue, I like to be around uh, 25 to 30 degrees. Okay, so how am I doing so far, Emily? Good, great. I'm learning a lot. You're, you're learning a lot? <laughs> what oh, a wonderful God. teacher. <laughs> no, I just babble. That's okay. Babbling's helpful. Okay. I'm a little on. distracted right now because both my cats are laying on my bed like licking their butts <laughs> and just next to each other. That's what cats do. You're being horribly distracting. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm watching my apoapsis. Uh, we can put the apoapsis wherever we want, but I like to put it just outside the atmosphere. Um, 
And since the atmosphere is 70,000, okay, so I'm going to continue to pitch over and bring my uh, prograde down a little bit. Uh, since 70,000 is the edge of the atmosphere, I like to go down to uh, 70, 71 or so. There we go. Okay, so I just cut my engines. So from here, there are two so ways. Can you just hit the space bar to cut your engines, or is there uh, a cut? X. X cuts X. your engines. Okay, so there are two main ways to circularize your orbit. I'm going to do the easier of the two, which is adding a maneuver node. Um, so let's zoom on the maneuver node. Okay, so I want to put it right on top of my apoapsis. If you put it before or behind, you're going to have to burn uh, in a different direction. You're going to have to add some uh, radial. Okay, so I'm just pulling the prograde until I get my periapsis up above 70. Okay, now you can see my apoapsis is 72, and it's, it's going to get sloppier, I promise. Uh, there's a much better way of doing this, but it's not quite as easy. So here we are, we're at uh, 52,000. So what I'm going to do is, since we're not going to be burning for a little bit, uh, I'm going to go ahead and pitch over right away uh, to my, um, my maneuver node. That's that uh, dark blue guy. I'm going to pitch right over to the maneuver Ooh. node. And uh, maneuver nodes are universe relative. Oh, gosh, come on back. This thing real. Oh, do I have RCS? No, no RCS. Okay. Uh, so uh, maneuver nodes are universe relative, which means that if you point at them at one point uh, and then time accelerate, uh, as the universe uh, shifts, that maneuver node will stay in the same place. That pointer will stay in the same place. Uh, so it's, uh, it's pretty safe to go ahead and point at it. Um, the other thing then, so what you can notice is we've got this, uh, this bar here that shows us the remaining amount of delta V. You can see it's going to take us almost a kilometer uh, per second to circularize our orbit. Uh, down here you've got, can you see my cursor, Emily? What? Can you see my cursor? Can you yeah. see what I'm pointing at? Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, so then down here you've got two other bits of information, your estimated burn and your uh, time to the node. Uh, the estimated burn is based on your most recent burn. Uh, so this is actually, our burn is going to take longer than 25 seconds uh, because we're going to run out of fuel here. We're going to have to stage and, and uh, dump that uh, this lifter stage and switch over to this engine. There's an engine right here behind this cowl. Um, so it's actually going to take longer than 25 seconds because the upper stage is a lower thrust to weight ratio. Um, but it's, it's a pretty good estimate. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait until we're about um, 20 seconds away from the node, and then I'm going to start burning. Um, and uh, as we ascend through the atmosphere, our apoapsis, yeah, you can see it's dropped down to 70.7 .7 when I originally stopped it at like 71 and 200, something like that. Uh, it's dropped down because the atmosphere has slowed us down. So that's why I normally shoot for uh, 71,000 instead of just a straight 70,000. So I, I get a little bit of wiggle room. Okay, so let's time accelerate up to 20 seconds. Oh, that's what that does. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's what that does. Okay. I could not figure out what the purpose of that was. Oh, God. If okay, so it. now you can see we're not burning at our prograde. We're burning at the maneuver node. Oh. Uh, and that's, that's kind of an issue. That means that we're not being super, uh, super efficient, um, which is kind of the problem with uh, maneuver nodes, is they assume, okay, here we go, we're going to stage, and there's our upper stage. Uh, maneuver nodes assume that uh, the thrust is instantaneous, and it just isn't. Um, so they're, they're a little bit uh, of a guess, but they're, they're a pretty good guess. Okay, so now you can see it's slipping away from us, but we're going to ignore it. We're just going to watch our periapsis. And, uh, okay, so I, our apoapsis has slipped way out here. Uh, but our periapsis is still below us. So there are some clever things we can do to fix this situation. 
Mm-hmm. Or we can just keep burning at at, at uh, our prograde, and that's really the easiest thing to do. Okay, so now it's above 70,000. So now we're in a 76 by 70 kilometer orbit, and that's it. We're done. This is a stable orbit. It's not coming down. <laughs> good job, us. Right? Yeah, I know, right? We did a good job. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, let's see. If, if ascent didn't take so damn long, I could show you a better way of doing it. But while we're up here, let's just look at some basic uh, orbital maneuvers, should we? Yeah. Okay, so... Uh, uh, so what what should we look at first? We're, we got about ten minutes left uh, in in our little half hour. What what should we do first? Um, I don't know. What can you do? I've never gotten to this point. So yeah, you have. You've gotten into orbit. I got well. You corrected me on that. I don't think I was. You don't think you were. One time I uh, did an EVA and the guy lost hold of the ship and they both plummeted to their death. It was beautiful. Oh uh, yeah, with the the fiery <laughs> death. Yeah. Okay, well let's let's do an EVA real quick and make sure our ship is still in one piece. Uh, okay, so on little, how do you get his little jetpack to go? R. Oh. Yeah. So I could have uh, saved his life if I would have known that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the thing is a lot of people uh, a lot of people miss that. So um, I actually reset my. Uh, my EVA commands, um, but the defaults are uh, WASD um, uh, pushes them around on, on kind of a flat horizontal plane as if he was standing on the ground. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, shift uh, pushes him upward like, like this, and uh, control pushes him downward. Um, I actually switch it around so that it matches the RCS translation controls, but I can talk about that later. Um, L turns on your um, your EVA lights. R turns on and off your jetpack. You can see there's a nice little animation. And spacebar orients you to the view. So you notice if I point this way, and if I push him forward, oops, sorry, forward, he goes his forward, not my forward. Ah. So what you can do is hit spacebar, and he reorients to, to my camera view. And now I can push left and right, and he goes left and right according to me. So, so that's how you save your your kerbals if they go on. Uh, yeah, that's good to know. Yeah, and the controls are really tough to get the first time. Actually, the pretty much every time you have to go. Oh, right, that's how these are set up. But um, anyway, so then once you uh, come on, yeah, once you get close enough to a ladder, you just hit F. And then uh, you can scale up and down the ladder with WASD, um, just like as if you were walking along the ground. Okay. And then uh, you get up to a door and you have to go back in. Okay, so let's look at uh, some really cool orbital maneuvers. So let's say that my periapsis is too low and I want to raise it. The easiest way to do it would be to wait until I'm at apoapsis and then burn prograde, right? Okay. So the basic rule of orbital maneuvering is um, whatever you do, if you're in a circular orbit, whatever you do on this side of the orbit affects the opposite side of the orbit. So uh, if I, let me, uh, let me add a maneuver. Please tell me you can hear my dog snoring. No, I can't. <laughs> you're missing out. Who is it? It's Odie. She's snoring really loud. Oh, that that bitch. Uh, Okay, so I've created a node here. Um, So if I... So the nice thing about nodes is it lets us postulate a a maneuver, right? So uh, you can plop it in and then mess around with it and and see what would happen. So let's let's say uh, we were going to burn prograde. What would happen is the other side of our orbit, as we burn more and more prograde, the other side of our orbit goes up, right? Because what we do here uh, usually affects the other side. There's some exceptions. So if we wanted to raise our, our periapsis, what we would do is we'd wait until we got to our apoapsis and burn prograde, and that would raise our periapsis, right? Well, there's another thing we can do. 
What was that? What? You just said God. Oh, it's my damn dog. She won't stop yeah. snoring. <laughs> it, it's cute. so loud. I can't hear it, but I, I know it's cute. It's not cute. Uh, okay, so uh, we we don't just have to burn prograde and retrograde. We can also burn in two other directions. Uh, radial, which is towards and away from the planet. Mm -hmm. and uh, So it's radial and anti-radial. And normal and anti-normal are, are basically north and south in this, mm -hmm. this configuration. So if we wanted to raise our periapsis, um, we could burn radially. If you burn away from the planet, it shifts everything forward. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so if you burn straight up, it's pushing whatever's in front of you up, which makes sense. If you burn up, you're going to go up. Uh, but if we wanted to raise our periapsis, what we would do is we would burn towards Kerbin, and that's going to raise our periaps, yep. but it's going to lower our apoaps. Yep. Right? It's going to lower the opposite side. Um, Beautiful. Right. Um, and so when you're doing your ascent, if you just memorize a few little alterations, um, you can actually do the entire ascent without using... Um, a maneuver node, and you can circularize your orbit perfect every time, uh, just by remembering that if you burn above the horizon, you're going to be pushing your apoapsis away from you, and if you burn below the horizon, you're going to pull your apoapsis towards you, because you'll be lowering or raising whatever's in front or behind you. But we can talk about that next time we do this. So let me uh, let me deorbit this sucker. I think I heard her. Yeah, I'm sure you did. Okay. Uh, okay, so other than uh, going on EVA and burning up in the atmosphere, how do you deorbit? Um, I don't. I don't. I, I start over before then because I get frustrated. Okay. Well, or they you... crash, or they just fall and explode. That's happened before. Okay, well, can you think of a non-destructive way to, or to deorbit? Uh, just lower if you lower your orbit nice and slow. Right. So how would we how would we lower enter our, the atmosphere? What? So how would we lower our orbit? Do a maneuver, or you can use get a fuel left. Yeah, we got fuel left. Can't you rocket yourself down a little bit? Well, remember that. Uh, remember that to set up a maneuver node, we have to use fuel. Right, because it's it's right. just like a postulation. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, that though. Okay. So, which way do we want to burn? Do we want to burn straight down the planet? Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, there's actually a more efficient way. <laughs> Damn! I knew I was gonna be wrong. No. Uh, you can burn down towards the planet, and what it'll do is it'll push, uh, you know, whatever's 90 degrees in front of you. Yeah. It'll push that down towards the planet, but unfortunately, it'll also raise this side of the orbit up. Yeah, um, you're right. So you're spending a lot of energy pushing your orbit higher in one part and lower in another. So actually the the most energy efficient thing to do is to just point retrograde, uh, which is, uh, so that's the prograde icon right there, that orange one. Yeah. So all we want to do is point retrograde. And if we burn retrograde, it, it's backwards. It's it's not towards the planet. But counterintuitively, it'll, it'll lower our orbit. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to do it from here so that we can watch our orbit change. Okay. So I just, I barely throttled up. So now our, our periapsis is going down, and uh, our apoapsis is actually going down as well. So they're both going down at the same time. You can see our apoapsis is coming closer to us, because right now our apoapsis is above us. So since we're burning retrograde, we're taking energy away from the orbit. And so both the high point and the low point in our orbit are going to come down. Um, and the only way that the high point in our orbit can come down is by coming closer to us, right? Because the high point in our yeah. orbit can't be lower than we are. Okay, so here's our periapsis dropping. And so now it, it went into the atmosphere almost immediately. Um, but let's, let's really, because we got a ton of fuel, <laughs> right? So, I, okay, I'm just going to throttle way up, and we're going to deorbit really quickly. Um, if you have a mod uh, installed, this can be a really bad idea, but if you're just running the vanilla version, 
it's not a bad thing. And in fact, we're going to come down pretty close to the Space Center. Because um, we'll probably come down uh, in here somewhere. Because the, the planet is rotating underneath us from left to right. Um, so we would impact there, but... Okay, so we'll, uh, we, we'll probably impact somewhere in the water. Uh, okay, so this ship has got a really cool feature. Uh, it's this uh, otherwise useless thing here on the nose. It's, it's a parachute. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, on here we've got another uh, uh, another decoupler, and so this kind of uh, this kind of separates the ship into the crew capsule and the and the service module. So we can we can decouple that because we don't need that anymore. So I'm going to stage to to decouple this guy. There it goes. And that will burn up. Uh, but we'll use our parachute and we'll land real nicely. Uh, this thing also has legs, so you could totally go to Minmus, or, or to uh, Moon for that matter. We could, we could totally land uh, on one of the moons. Okay, so let's uh, time accelerate here uh, until we get in. Okay, there we go. So we just dropped into the atmosphere and it switched over to these four arrows instead of the seven or whatever. The difference is um, when you're out of the atmosphere, you can put everything on rails and stop simulating the physics and, uh, and time accelerate very, very quickly. Um, but when you're in the atmosphere, uh, the game developers have decided that you have to be running physics, um, which is a good thing because that means that your ship can blow up and explode and things like yeah, that. Yeah, that seems fair to me. <laughs> yeah, right. So uh, when you're in the atmosphere, you get limited to these four, and these are physics time acceleration, um, which means that it's um, uh, always going to uh, simulate physics, and it will go a lot slower. It'll only go up to four times acceleration instead of thousands and thousands. Oh, right, and we're facing the wrong way. We would like to have the aft end of our ship pointing forwards, so we want the top of our ship pointing at retrograde, right? Uh, and uh, I actually did this pointing in the wrong direction. So our service module is going to come zipping past us, and I really hope it's not going to hit us. Uh-oh. Yeah. But it'll, it'll probably drift away. <laughs> it would be surprising if it was to hit us. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to not deploy my parachute until after I've slowed way down. So you can see that we're going at 2.2 kilometers a second. Uh, and any parachute opening at that speed would be ripped to shreds as soon as it hit the atmosphere. So what I generally like to do is uh, wait until the, um, the re-entry effects have stopped, uh, and then I go ahead and open my parachute sometime after that, because it just feels a little bit more realistic to me. Okay, so here we go, falling into the atmosphere. Oh, look at you go. Yeah, if this was real life at this point, I'd be really terrified. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did you did you see that video of um of a cam? There was a camera inside of a uh, Soyuz capsule as it was landing. No, but I bet it was horrifying. It was terrifying. Because uh, what the Soyuz capsule does is on re-entry, the entire thing is a lifting body. And so it rotates left and right to control its altitude as it's coming in, or to control its uh, the angle that it's coming in. And uh, the thing is loud as anything. And then what's really terrifying is that they don't land in water like any intelligent person returning to Earth does. No. They decide to land on land. <laughs> uh, and so uh, they actually have retro rockets built in that fire just before landing. Oh, there are re-entry effects. You see them? No. The flames? Oh, yep, yep, because I had a little guy fall through the atmosphere and he lit on fire too. Oh, God, that's so <laughs> horrifying. But he didn't burn up. He was still, he came out of it seemingly unscathed. Yeah, no, the, um, the thing is, right now there isn't any re-entry heat. Um, there's a really cool mod that you can install called Deadly Reentry that requires you to have uh, heat shields and 
and cool things like that, but yeah. uh, we uh, we don't have that installed. Okay, so we're slowly slowing down. You can see we came in at 22,000 meters per second, and we're down to 700, 600 uh, meters per second. Um, and so if you're landing a ship on rockets, you don't want to start firing them until you absolutely have to because you can just let the atmosphere do most of the work. Huh. Uh, okay, so let's get that parachute out. That might be handy. Um, really? And the parachute, the standard parachutes have two modes, uh, kind of this drogue shoot mode and then a fully deployed mode. Um, the semi-deployed deploys at a certain air pressure, um, which is, I think, a, I don't know what it is. It, it'll actually tell us if you right-click on it. Oh, okay, so at a hundredth of a hundredth of an atmosphere or something, I guess. Um, and then they fully deploy once you get down to 500 meters. Um, and the really horrible thing is that this doesn't tell us our actual altitude. This is our altitude above sea level. And we're coming in uh, above the sea. Right, let's see where... Okay, so we didn't even make it to the space center. We slowed way down. Uh, so we're coming in over the sea. So uh, our sea level altitude is also our actual altitude. Uh, but if you're over land... Oops. Uh, if you're over land, you can... Uh, you know, the, your parachute will deploy while you're still, you know, a thousand feet uh, above sea level or whatever. Uh, what you can do is you can hit C for cockpit, and uh, you can zoom in on your radar altimeter, and that'll tell you your actual altitude above uh, above the ground. Um, so that isn't a totally useless feature. <laughs> More or less. It's like, actually, I'm just yeah. looking around in here. <laughs> oh, what, the uh, the cockpit? Yeah, I mean... No, because you got windows. Oh, uh, you can't no, see. No, you don't. <laughs> okay. I see yeah. your parachute. <laughs> so, yeah, we can see out the window. Beautiful. Yeah, no, uh, the internal cockpit view is not totally useless. It can be handy, yeah, so there, our parachute opened up all the way. Uh, it can be fun for uh, challenges. Um, you've got some extra dials in here that you don't have out there, so you've got, uh, oh, there's your, yeah, there's a, there's a better radar altimeter. Um, you've got that, you've got um, your vertical speed indicator, um, which you don't have outside. Outside your, uh, what? Uh, your surface speed is uh, horizontal and vertical combined, mm -hmm. um, which is a real bitch when you're trying to land. Uh, so you can pop into the cockpit and look at your uh, vertical speed. Okay, here we go. We're almost down. Four, three, two, one. And we're safely down. Hooray. There we go. We've gotten to orbit. That's all I wanted to do for the first episode. So uh, next time we can start looking at uh, um, orbital maneuvers and ship development and stuff like that. I'm very excited. Yeah, sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> okay, so uh, let me quit KSP. And let me uh, let me look at our uh, YouTube page. I, I highly doubt that we got any uh, any questions because uh, we're down to one viewer now. Because I'm oh, so awesome. fucking boring. Yeah, I know. I think we're entertaining. I think, but uh, I think we're we're very entertained by ourselves. Well, yeah, that's oh. okay though. Okay. Okay. So, oops. Okay. So that's uh, that's the first episode. You want to try to do one of these a week? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's Christmas break. I don't have anything else to do. Oh, my God. I'm so annoyed that Christmas is here because it's... I have to take a day off work, which means that I have to get that day's work done another time. Yeah. Okay, let me, uh, let me end the broadcast. Uh, so uh, to everybody who's uh, still watching, thanks for, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please send any questions. Uh, either to me on Reddit, uh, I'm uh, 
Hapax legomena, H-A-P-A-X-L-E-G-O-M-I-N-A. Uh, what do you, Emily, you're Emily the man, right? On Reddit? Yeah. Okay. I'm pretty so sure. Drop us, drop us a line. We'll try to answer questions in our next episode. Don't send me questions. <laughs> Don't send Emily questions. Send me questions. Yeah, Ben knows the answers. <laughs> Alrighty. Thanks, everybody, for watching.